You know, after I worked in television news for 35 years, most of it at NBC News, uh, my wife and I decided we both wanted a change. I'd been doing what I'd been doing for so long in television. I knew I could do it, I could do it well, but I wanted to try to see what else I could do. What other muscles could I flex? What other talents could I use? So she and I went as far as we could go from Los Angeles, population 8 million, to a little island off the coast of Maine, which was a population of two, and that was only when we were there, because we were the only residents on this little island. And we lived there for the next 13 years in a completely different kind of existence than we had had before. Uh, indeed, one of my favorite chapters in the, in the book, Finding Moosewood, Finding God, is, is uh, the chapter on our actual physical move from L.A. Slowly, six-week trip across the country, motoring along and observing and taking things in and realizing that we were in the middle of a change of life unlike we might have imagined we would ever do. This island is, is an island that is not an island at low tide. It is an island that is, when the tide goes out, there is a bar that connects Bar Island with Bar Harbor, the town over on the mainland. And because the tidal range is about 11 foot at that point along the main coast. So when the tide goes out, there is this gravel and mussel shell bar about a third of a mile long that you can hike across. You can bring, you can drive across. So it was an island that wasn't an island. Uh, that was appealing. Uh, but also, it was an island that, that itself was owned by the National Park for the most part. So there was only going to be this one home on the island. And uh, that, was, that was appealing. The limitations of living on an island like that are, first of all, there are no public utilities on the island. The uh, local power company said, well, we can provide power for you, and the cost would be $165,000. So we opted not to do that. And we had solar panels on the roof for, to provide our electricity, a very limited supply of electricity. We were very frugal. We were using DC lights. We were using a propane refrigerator, which was only nine cubic foot, if you can imagine that. Uh, and, uh, and then we had a wood stove for heat and a well for water. It was, uh, it was simple. It was rustic, it was limiting, and it was beautiful. When snow comes, it stays clean. It doesn't immediately get gritty and dirty as it might in a city. You know? So it's a beauty to have. When we have to go up on the solar panels to sweep them off to get the snow off the panels so you can get electricity through the system, then it's a challenge, but you only have to do that if it's a bright and sunny day. So you take turns, one of you climbing up onto the roof, the other one anchoring the, 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 the ladder with her feet or his feet, and you sweep off the panels and you look around and you've got this magnificent view all up and down the coast of Maine. It's gorgeous. A tree? Moosewood is a, is a form of maple tree, uh, a variety of maple tree that exists there. It's a small tree. And the first time I saw it and we got thinking about naming the house, I thought, uh, that moosewood tree is what I want to be now. I'd been big time television guy, wow, wow, very important. <laughs> the moosewood tree is an understory tree. It doesn't have to be up on top. And I decided I don't either anymore. It has to have large leaves to get enough sun to survive. I had to have enough uh, and enlarged ears and eyes to take in all the glories around us. So I said, let's call the place Moosewood, and it stuck. After I gave up the television business and moved to the island, I realized that there was more to know about life than I had ever learned in the daily news business, because there's more to life than what is in the news. The news is much too confrontational and, and cantankerous and mean and nasty and it is, a, it is a combination of, of the most terrible things in our lives and the most terrible people in them as well and the contest between them. The news business had tired me and we moved to the island and found that uh, we found a new life. We found new lives for ourselves and a new reason for living. 
Uh, and so I started working on, on a memoir that initially was just going to tell some of the great stories from the tellers and years. And I did that, and I put those in there. And then I realized that there was more than that to be told. I started by writing two different manuscripts. One was a manuscript of the life in television. And uh, rounding up giraffe in Kenya with William Holden and, and uh, having a cameraman beaten to the ground by Evil Knievel and getting back at him. Uh, and going and covering the, the Vietnam War for several years, of course. I was putting those stories into one manuscript. Into another manuscript, I was putting the transformation that my wife and I were undergoing by leaving Los Angeles and moving to this unoccupied island, except for us, off the coast of Maine. Uh, so I had these two manuscripts, and I went to, a, I went to a, an agent, a literary agent, and I said, what do you think? And she very wisely said, I think you've got either two okay books or one very important book if you weave the two together. Let people see the glamour of the television business and the excitement of it that you knew, and then that makes more important the fact that you gave it up. As it says in the, in the dust jacket, somebody wrote this line, he gave up his life's work and found his life's purpose. Uh, as someone who, who is much more faithful to his God today than he was when he started making the move to Moosewood and when he started writing about it and coming to realize the depth of the commitment that he had made to his Lord and to realize that it's not just enough for me to be a Christian anymore, a believer, I have to proclaim have to proclaim my belief, and that's what the book does. Mm -hmm.